Good day, Gulf High. Today is Wednesday, February 15th, 2023. I'm Desiree. And I'm Elizabeth, coming to you from WBUC Studios with your school news. The word of the day is besotted, which is an adjective that means loving someone or something so much that you cannot think clearly. Can you use that in a sentence, Elizabeth? I sure can, Desiree. He was so besotted with his classmate that he began to make errors in his work. And now for today's weather forecast. Our temperatures will be warming up for the next few days as we reach a high today of 81 degrees with a low of 63 degrees and a 0% chance of rain. Enjoy the weather and have a great day, Bucks. In 1898, the USS Maine explodes in Cuba's Havana Harbor. In 1953, 17-year-old Tenley Albright becomes the first female U.S. figure skater to win the world title. In 1998, Dale Earnhardt Sr. wins his first Daytona 500 NASCAR race. And in 1903, the first teddy bear goes on sale. In current news, the sole winner of November's $2 billion Powerball jackpot was announced yesterday. A soccer match in Colombia is suspended after one fan attacks another on the field, and then that fan chases his attacker across the pitch. Rescuers in Turkey are still reporting hearing voices under the rubble of fallen buildings one week after a major earthquake, earthquake hit the area. And a Polish mother, who already has seven children, gives birth to quintuplets in a hospital in southern Poland. Here's the joke of the day. What does the Dentist of the Year get as an award? Stay tuned to the end of the news for the answer. Hello, I'm Kurt Browning, Pasco County Superintendent of Schools. In recent weeks and months, our schools have experienced a troubling number of threatening comments and anonymous threats posted on social media. Parents, many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've experienced the frustration of knowing that your child's school is on a controlled campus, or you've seen the images of law enforcement surrounding your child's school. It's scary, it's stressful, and at times, it's confusing. In this brief video, I want to put this phenomenon into perspective and make a plea to parents and students. First of all, this is not new and it is not unique to Pasco schools. However, it has gotten out of hand. Social media has made it worse and we need to put an end to it. I have to say that in Pasco, we are extremely fortunate. We have law enforcement partners, the Pasco Sheriff's Office and the municipal departments 
who are as committed as we are to taking all threats seriously and to investigating thoroughly. Often that results in disruption and loss of instructional time, not to mention the time and expense that law enforcement devotes to their often complex investigations. I'm happy to report that those investigations recently resulted in two arrests. Thanks to law enforcement and their sophisticated investigations, teens who thought they were anonymous and untraceable on social media soon found out otherwise. Their misbehaviors, their crimes, resulted in significant disruption at school. Now they face serious criminal charges. As I've said before, making anonymous social media threats is not a joke. It is a crime. That is the only appropriate way to deal with these threats, and that's how we will continue to deal with them. Now I have a message for parents and a message for students. Parents, when we notify you that a threat against your student's school was a hoax or that it was unfounded, we receive two kinds of responses. There are those parents who thank us for making safety a priority. And there are those who question why it was necessary to disrupt the school day or ask why we can't keep the school safe. To that latter group, I say, we do everything we can to keep students and staff safe, and we minimize disruption as much as possible. We cannot and we will not rush an investigation. There are no shortcuts. We resume our normal school day as soon as we know it is safe to do so. And we notify parents about what's going on as soon as we sort out the facts. I ask for your patience, and I ask that you join us in sending a clear message to your students. What is our message to students? First, if you are thinking it would be clever or funny to send out a threatening message or make a threatening comment, even if it's just the one friend, don't do it. Your comment or your message will make the rounds, and it will not be treated as a joke. We will make every effort to determine where it originated, and you will face serious consequences. Most students are as frustrated as we are and have had to weather the disruptions to their campus. To those students, I say that if you become aware of a social media post or comments that concern you, report it to law enforcement or to school administration. It will be investigated. Don't spread the rumor or share it on social media. That just makes it worse. To summarize, I want parents and students to know that safety truly is our highest priority. The only way to keep our campuses safe is to take all threats seriously and to take nothing for granted. With patience and with students, parents, and law enforcement all working together, we can reduce or eliminate these threats and devote the entire school day to delivering the world-class education our students deserve. Thank you. All seniors participating in graduation and senior events will need to pay the $115 senior fee. This fee is paid and collected on the Harris Jones website and the link can be found on our GHS Facebook page and GHS website. The payment includes the cap and gown medallion, your diploma and diploma cover, the graduation venue, and the senior breakfast. And please note that cap and gowns are only available through the Harris Jones website and are included when you pay the senior fee. Seniors who are not walking at graduation need to see Ms. Diaz or Mrs. Boehner regarding your mandatory graduation fees. So, what does the dentist of the year get as an award? A little plaque. That's all for our news. Have, Have a, a good, good National, National Gumdrop, Gumdrop Day, Golf High. Welcome to February 15th on the National Day calendar. If you've ever played the board game Candyland, you will know there is no Gumdrop King in the Gumdrop Mountains. But there was one in real life. Percy Truesdell was posthumously named the Gumdrop King for his improvement of the candy. Percy worked in the chemistry labs of Ohio State University, and it was here that he made a discovery. By adding a perfect amount of starch to the recipe, the once solid glob of sugar became a smooth, chewy confection. The original flavors of clove, allspice, cinnamon, and spearmint are not as popular today, but they do go nicely on gingerbread houses. Most people still prefer cherry, grape, orange, and lemon, and thanks to the Gumdrop King, we can celebrate National Gumdrop Day without breaking our teeth. I'm Marlo Anderson with the National Day Calendar. See you again tomorrow as we celebrate every day.